Hello, hello everyone. This is your faithful friend Sandra Graves and welcome to The Code. Anyway, um, don't forget that we are here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And whenever we are not live, which is not usual, we will have this recording for you to be able to enjoy and learn. And if you're an expert, please get in touch with us at info at nvivoassociates.com. Again, info at nvivoassociates.com. The goal is to grow, 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 and to achieve our goals. And today, for that reason, we have our guest. He is a life coach, and he's going to be talking to us about understanding your core values. I know you have heard the word values at some point in your life, but it's something that we enter one ear and go through the other. But this is what um, Tim Bronson is going to be helping us um, understand today. Here with you, your host, Sandra Graves. Um, if you have any question, please post your questions at the bottom of this video. And if you want to connect with Tim after this interview, please look at his website right here in the bottom of the screens. You're going to be able to find his information. So let's, let's get to Tim now. Tim Branson, tell us about you. Before we start anything, just tell us who you are, why you do what you do, and then let's get into the core values. I'm already worried whether I can match your enthusiasm levels, but Sandra, I'll do my best. Okay, uh, yeah, I've been a I've been a coach for 13 years, as anybody can tell from my accent. I'm originally from England, moved here in February 2006, started coaching full time in 2005, uh, and basically, I you know I'm I'm super passionate about core values. Uh, I've written a book on the topic that I use as really the basis for my coaching because it's given me more breakthroughs with clients and everything put together. So so I'm here with my wife and my three Dobermans in sunny Florida and uh, loving it, having a great time. Well, I love your accent. So <laughs> I am all ears um, with this accent and I'm looking forward to learning from you about this core value. So where do we begin um, with this core values? In, in, in the core values, can we just explain the basic of what the core values is? Yeah, okay. Well, it, most people, so, so as, as a coach, you know, when I went through my original coach training, they say people are going to come to you with their goals and they're going to want to achieve this and that and what have you. And that's fine. So um, I did very early on in my career, I had a guy come to me and he had a goal of earning $3 billion. Okay, sounds a crazy goal, but it, I, I know he's over a billion now. But anyway, so $3 billion. Now, Knowing that goal about somebody doesn't tell me anything about them. He could, he could want $3 billion because he wants to buy a small Caribbean island and go and live there in a hedonistic lifestyle. Or he may want $3 billion because he wants to um, maybe open shelters for homeless people or medical centers for people um, in countries where they haven't got access to that. So, so the goal remains the same, but the purpose under, underpinning it is completely different. So, so values really help us understand somebody. You know, goals are fairly superficial. I mean, the, 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 you know, they can definitely be values driven and they should be values driven. But they're fairly superficial. They're on the surface. Yeah, I want to achieve this. I want to achieve that. But what they don't tell you is the, is the why. Simon Cernick gave a, a, a teach a, a talk about pardon on, on TED that went viral on, on on why and this is kind of the core. He was really talking about core values. So with, with with values we go a level deeper. You know what's really important to you as a, as a human being because you know if I if I can help clients uh, you know go for goals or whatever, but if those goals aren't aren't underpinned by the values. They're going to be, even if they hit it, it's going to be somewhat anticlimactic. And then it's going to be, oh, I need to set a bigger or a better goal and, and do it all over again. But when we've got goals that are in alignment of, of who we are as a person, then they have intrinsic value. They have value as we're walk, working towards them as well as uh, achieving them. I hope all that makes sense. I've just promised a lot of information on you. That makes very much sense. So, where do we start with this understanding your core value? What were the first thing? of us to try to understand that? What will be the first step to that? Well, I think the first thing is to understand your own values. So, so um, 
the first thing I'm looking for, for there's various types of value conflict, but the most, the most, the easiest one to explain and the most obvious is when we have a value conflict with other people or or, or an, an industry, if we're in a job or whatever. So I'll use myself as an example, just because it's easiest. So I, I worked in sales for 20 years, and the, and the last sort of 10 years, the second 10 years was at quite a high level, at a corporate level, B2B, you know, long sales cycles, high value, and, and one of my one of my core values, my top three or four, is integrity, is operating with integrity. It, it's very difficult to do that in sales. Um, as an industry, it, it tends to have had a bypass, uh, an integrity bypass operation. It's about hitting targets. It's about selling product or services. And they don't often don't care how you do it as long as you do it. So by by pushing people to buy stuff that maybe wasn't right for them or, or or selling products that I know wasn't right for them and not telling them about other products that maybe you know it was always uncomfortable for me and I didn't like it and it and it it created a lot of stress so that that's where you get an insight into core values in, in your own values that um like I say, I had I a value conflict with the business I work for, about three different businesses and the industry. But we can have them with other people. If you think about people that you um, that you dislike, somewhere along the line, there's going to be some value, something that maybe you value tolerance and they're not so tolerant, or you value peace and 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 they are you know angry all the time or whatever. So it, it really understand our values really helps us understand. First of all, ourselves, but also how we interact with other people uh, and why we may feel uncomfortable in certain people's presence um, and, and not others and other people we feel comfortable. Yeah, there's a massive, massive sort of thing going on at the moment. And, I'm, you know, I won't go into, into, into the minutiae of it, but, you know, with, with the government, with, with the political system, it's all based on values is what people value and what people don't value. And that's what's causing the tension within the country. You've got this massive value conflict going on at the moment, which is a, an outsider, so to speak, as a, as a Brit, it's quite interesting to observe. So what about um, a example, a realtor that is selling a house and they know that this house is no good, but they know that the money's there. How can they have show core values in, in, in selling this house. They are desperate for this money. Um, they just really want to get rid of this house. They know that this house is not good. How do they implement or show that they have core values in this? I mean, that's really tough because they've got, you, you've got to want to. What, what happens in situations like this is people get into, a, they get into self-justification. So they'll, they'll justify saying, well, you know, I, I am, I'm selling it when it's maybe not worth it. But because of this, we paid this for it or it, it's worth that. Or, or you know what? Those people weren't quite as nice as I thought they were. And if I ripped them off for an extra two or three grand, they should have asked me about that. It's their fault. So I think, you, you know, You've got to want to to live with your core values, and if you if if you've got a value of honesty or integrity, and you go down that path of trying to exploit somebody, then it's very very difficult to to get back because, like I say, as human beings, we go into a, a self justification process. I, one of my best friends is a police officer, and he said uh, nobody ever admits to a crime. Even the people that admit to it, confess, will then follow it up by saying, but if that person had done that, I wouldn't have done it. But if I hadn't have been, you know, the government had to take my house off me, I wouldn't have burgled that house or, or whatever. There's always a, that self-justification. So I think you either live your values or you don't. There's, there's really no room, Sandra, to compromise with stuff like that. Once you go down that path, it's very, yeah. very difficult to get yourself back on it again. Yeah, totally agree. So in other words, it's, it's really like if you will, if you have to question yourself when no one is around about what you did, then you, should you be uncomfortable with that doing it publicly, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's an internal value conflict. So an internal value conflict is when we have a value, but we don't practice it. So, so yeah, that that normally is what happens when somebody breaches their own values. There's that sense that something's not quite right, that they, yeah. they feel like they've let themselves down, um, and and the only way you can rectify that is is to not do it next time or whatever. But the thing is, what once people start to compromise with their values, it's like when people, you know, 
people who start with crime, they don't start by, you know, by robbing a bank. They start with little things they build up and build up and justify each time. It's the same with, with, with values. It, it, you've got to take that. You, you've got to be mindful. You've got to step in at a conscious level and say, whoa, hang on a minute. Let me reassess, you know, what is really important to me? What's going to help me sleep at night and feel good about myself? without needing you know anything from anybody else and, and and that's tough that takes a certain amount of, of 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 moral integrity and it takes a certain amount of character to do that and sadly most people don't do it that's that's good thank you for for explaining that so since um i want you to go ahead and leave this conversation i'm going to hold my questions so go ahead okay well uh, all right so i think the first thing we're going to start with is is, is finding out what your values are. So most people listening to this, they may have a sense of what the values are, but in 13 years of coaching and 12 years of using the values process, I've never had anybody come to me that, that, that truly knew what the values were. I've had, people, um, I've had people tell me they knew, and then when I took them through the process, they weren't the same people that may be. I, I know Tony Robbins does, a, does a, some form of values elicitation, um, but it's kind of not where I go with it, and it's not as deep. So pe people have a tendency to, to – so I'll give you a classic example. So family is a value. So family can be super, super important for many people and is. But there's also a tendency to believe that we should have family as our number one value. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily the case. I mean, family is not in my top eight values, but it doesn't mean to say I don't love my family. I mean, I don't have kids, and most of my parents have passed away, but I've got sisters and nephews and nieces, and I'm married and what have you. So my family is super important, but there's things that kind of sit above that. So the, so they're still, it's still really, really important. So it's just trying to figure out that hierarchy of what, of what comes first. Yeah. So... Um, so to work out what our values are, the, the process that I use with clients is fairly complicated. And I couldn't explain it uh, on here, Sandra, it, and not clearly in the, in the time we've got. But, but there is a, the, the, there's a, a kind of down and dirty way that you can do it if you're in a hurry and you don't want to go through the process. And, and the first thing is, if you do it for yourself, the first thing is to say, what's important to me? And then ask that question. Just think about it. What's important to me? So it may be. You know, the answer could come back money. Well, money's not a value. It can't, nothing can be a value unless it's a value in and of itself. So, so money, for example, um, if you can't spend it or invest it or give it to charity or whatever, it's got, it's got no use. So it can't be values. So then it's like, okay, what's important to me? Money. And then it's, what does that give me? Okay, well, money, maybe it gives me freedom. Uh, maybe it gives me a sense of security or whatever. And then, then the question is, okay, so I suppose it's freedom. Well, what does freedom give me? Uh, and you keep drilling down. So you, you'll get to the point fairly quickly where there's no answer. Well, freedom gives me freedom, you know, or security gives me security or whatever. So, so you, you carry on drilling down as far as you can. And then eventually what, you, what you're left with at the end is a value. Mm -hmm. so, so then you start again. You know, what else is important to me? Okay, well, well, my family is important to me. What does my family give me? Well, my family gives me love. What does love give me? Well, well I have to say something about that because sure. the reason why, and this is to the audience that is listening, the reason why we are actually recording today is because he only doesn't talk about his values. He actually lives his values <laughs> because I can tell you that we usually get together at seven, but because this is his family time, he was not able to to do the interview during that time. So this is the reason why I was like, wow, that is so cool. Someone that actually holds true to what they believe in, I have to do this interview. And this is the reason why you guys are listening to it now because he just not only preach, he implemented into his own life. So I had to put that in there, Tim, because <laughs> I really like that you have stand for that. With, I know my assistant went back and forth trying to get the right date with you, and I really admire that. Yeah, well, well, well thank you. And it, it's, yeah, so so when I got the email, you know, I immediately said, I always say yes to an interview. I'm always happy to do interviews because I'm passionate about what I do, and I want to spread the word about what how coaching can help people. But when it came back that it was 8 East, and that's literally the time I sit down with my wife, and you know, she, she works long hours. She's a, 
she's a, a nurse practitioner and and um so we sit down and i just said oh sorry i can't do it and it's just i also if if a, if a client wants to hire me and says i, I want to meet you you know i want to have our sessions at like 10 30 eastern in the morning i'm like oh, i can't do it so i take my dogs out there <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> I, I applaud you i applaud you seriously and it's not it is very very great when um someone is actually um talking about something that they're living because i can have many people interview and talk about oh they are expert in this and that but one thing is to talk about it one thing is to actually do it so um i applaud that well thank you and i think it's been exposed to me you know i'm not sure that i always did this Andrew. in fact i know i didn't i was virgin on a workaholic when i was in sales and um you, you, you know so it, it, you know when you're exposed to this stuff time and time again it, it, you, you're more so I'm more aware of that uncomfortable feeling if I'm not operating with um, with integrity. So so I had a partner in another business I've got where I train coaches and I brought a partner in and he brought into the business and about a year after year after working together we just completely different philosophies because to me it's all about delivering as much value as you can and then money becomes a byproduct. Yeah. Uh, whereas him, it was all about how much revenue can we make from this and so on and so forth. And I'm sorry if there's a noise in the background. That's my dog who doesn't like being locked out of the office. So since your dad, your dog have just decided to let us have a break, I'm going to be right back. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, my friends, for watching The Code. Don't forget that we are here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are bringing you coaches and speakers and classes and experts in different areas in order to help you grow. That's what we are here for. So if you have any comments, questions, or if you are a sponsor, please send us an email to info at envivoassociate.com. Again, info at envivoassociate.com. Well, my friends, welcome back again to The Code. And we had ended this where I was letting you guys know that Tim practiced what he preaches. Oh, we're talking about core values, understanding your core values. And we have Tim Branson with us. And if you want to connect with him and really work more on your core values, your integrity, your character, you want to work with these things, please connect with him. His website is right here at the bottom of the screen, you can see the website and you are free to connect with him. Um, and it's always great to know that we are connecting with someone that is not just talking, but is doing what he's actually said that he's an expert in. So Tim, back to you. Okay, yeah, so um, so really, so when you go through the process and you, and you figure out um, what your values are, then, then, you, then you have to, um, form a hierarchy so you kind of want to know um so what what is the first thing what is the most important thing for you so again i'll give you an example um i work with a an attorney this is a number of years ago now and um he was just working insane hours he was working over 100 hours a week and uh earning a lot of money but he was trying he wanted to become a partner in the law firm and anybody that knows anything about law knows how difficult that is and the kind of the hours you have to put in. So he came to see me because he was kind of like stressed and doing this. He got a, he got a young family. I forget exactly now uh, what the setup was, but I know he got, I think he got a t two young children and a, and a wife. And we did the we did the, the value elicitation. He was a face to face client. And I've got a whiteboard on my office wall. And I started writing the values down. He started laughing the values and. and uh, I'm one of these people, if I hear something laughing, I can't stop laughing myself, and I had no idea what we were laughing at. And uh, his values had come out, was family was at number one, and then the second one was health, and then I, I can't remember below that. And he started laughing, and he said, uh, and he said to me, he said, I, I don't really want a, to be a partner, do I? And I said, 
I don't know, don't you? He said, no. He said, well, my, th my top two values are, are family and health. And to, to achieve that, I I'm going to have to sacrifice family time. Um, plus, I'm not sure what the damage it's doing to my health because I'm stressed all the time and not sleeping mm -hmm. well and working ridiculous hours. And uh, he got up and said, I, I think we're done. And, and we shook hands and, and he wouldn't even take, he booked me for like six sessions. Like it was only the second session. He wouldn't even, he wouldn't even uh, take the money back. He just said he wanted, he wanted, he was going to become an associate in a smaller firm. And that's kind of the, the, the thing. It, it, it's people chase money. So, you know, the thing is, Sandra, everybody thinks, <clears throat> everybody gets the theory that money isn't going to make you happy. Once it takes you out of poverty, you know, if you, that's, it's different if you're living in poverty, you can't meet your bills or you've got a 50 grand on your credit card or whatever. But once you take people into a, a you know, reasonable standard of living, the more money they have, it, it becomes a law of diminishing returns. So you get to the point and you get into seven figures where it really makes little difference on people's happiness levels. Everybody gets that at a, at a, um, a conscious level but they don't get it for themselves. They get it for everybody else. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, money yeah. doesn't, you know. But I do still need that 20% pay rise. But I do need those Jimmy Choo's or I do need that bigger car or a house with three rooms that I never use, but maybe some family will come down one day and I'll use them. You know, so it's kind of this belief. So, so we get it intellectually, but we don't get it at the level down. And that's what where values live. They're, they're below that. So, you know, if you've got, if you can live in alignment with your values, and you can't do it all the time. Stuff, there's context and societal values and stuff, and it, it's 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 not an exact science. But if you can live mo most of the time, then you're going to be happier most of the time, because what people think money will give them in terms of happiness, it's like, well. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't give you anything in terms of your, of your values, unless you want money to maybe give back to charity or, you know, or, or to help family members or whatever that are struggling. It's, you know, it's different then. So, so I think, you know, when we know our values, when we can start to put those things first. So, you know, like, you know, I could have done the interview at eight o'clock tonight, but it would have meant that that's one night less that I get to sit down and talk to my wife and eat a meal with her and. I think one of the things that I've noticed since I got, you know, I'm 55 now. When I got past 55, is it uh, 50? Is suddenly notice, whoa, hang on a minute, <laughs> this is going a little bit too quickly, and that you know there, there isn't a, a, an infinite amount of days and an infinite amount of times I can sit down with a wife. And, you know, one of our dogs is fairly sick, and she's not going to be around in six months' time. And I'm trying to, you know, spend as much time taking her out, and I know she's, you know, she loves it and what have you, and and it's. It's, it's having that realization that this stuff isn't important tomorrow yeah. because tomorrow's just a just a, a, a concoction in your brain that may or may not happen. It probably will, but it's just an imagine you know something imaginary at this point. You know, it's now. It's like well, you can have this stuff now. You can be content now. You can be you know you can spend time with you know presuming all things being equal, you can spend time with your loved ones now and enjoy that just as much as you can tomorrow when maybe you think you might have more money and you can enjoy it more. So as human beings, you know, we're, we're always future tense ourselves. We're always um, trying to think, well, what's going to happen next week or next month or next year? It's just like, well, okay, you can do that, but then you lose what you've got now, and that's yeah. just like a, a, a day wasted. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that because I, I know – I did not have a clue about my core values when I first started modeling many years ago. And I climbed to the top and I forgot everybody that was supposedly important for me. I did not right. put them in my priority. And when I got to the top, it was empty. I, it was Money wasn't the problem. It was my heart, my values. I did not set them clearly. And then it was just like, what am I doing all this for? It wasn't the yeah. wrong what I was getting. It was wrong what I did, with, um, how I did it. So I really appreciate that you explained that. And to you that is listening, um, just like Tim said, make sure you set it into priority. What is really important for you? It can be spiritual. It can be family. And so Absolutely. some people, yes. money is the more important than family and, and, and everything else. So you, your values doesn't have to be my values. So. Right. right. Yeah, and they, and they won't be. They'll be different. You know, in the time that I, in all the time I've, I've, I've 
done the value process. I've never had a client with the exact same three top values as mine. I'll just tell you what mine are, so they're not it doesn't they're not something really weird. It's mine are peace, integrity, and, and freedom with with humor fluctuating between three and four. Yeah. Um, so you know, there's there's loads and loads of permutations, and and, and it's so it's been aware. It's, it's self awareness. It goes back almost to Maslow's hierarchy of lead. This this self actualization, so that we know what we're about and what's important to us, and and those around us, and and, and you know, we do things. It's you know, it, it seems to slip past a lot of people that, you, you, that there's. There's just as many percentage wise, there's just as many happy poor people as there are happy rich people. And, you know, that we use same in the modeling world. That happens a lot in things like, you know, it, it, in film and movies and, and sports. Celebrity. It's just like because you get to the top and then it's like, okay, where do I go from here? You know, the only way then is down, and which is why you see so many celebrities, you know, struggle to deal with that because because everything's rather than being intrinsic, rather than being driven by what's important to them, yeah. they're trying to do what they think will will appeal to other people. And you know, the, the whole fame thing is always extrinsic. It's always like you know, um, outside of your control. So once your once your success or happiness is dependent about what what other people, how they treat you, what they think about you, or whatever. You're in a huge hole because that's going to, oh, you've yeah. not got control over your life. It, you know, the, so the movie flops or, you, or you're blowing a, 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 your ACL out and suddenly you've lost your career as a footballer or whatever, or as a, a writer, suddenly your, your next book, you know, whatever it is, or, you know, as a model. So suddenly you put weight on or you start to get to that age where nobody wants to hire. You know, and that, then it, it, if, <laughs> if your identity was wrapped up in that, the importance yeah. of that, then... It's no wonder people then sort of having psychological problems because they don't know how to deal with it because they haven't got control of the situation. Yeah. So um, since this show is coming to an end, can you um, tell us what else can we do in, in, in closing? What else can we do in order for us to live with values? Which show okay. Values? Well, I think the first thing is work out, get, get at least your top three. I take clients down to a top eight. Well, get at least your top three. And then start to ask yourself, you know, if you're doing a job, is it in alignment with your values? Are you allowed to live your value? It may be that your top values don't, you know, you may need to go down further because it may be things like family, love and, and whatever that aren't relevant. for. So with your work, are you allowed to demonstrate your values at work? Are you allowed to demonstrate your values, you know, for the, around the, with the people that you love? Because if you can't, if, if in the workplace is probably the most critical one, if you're, if you're compromising your values all the time, then I'm sorry to say this, you probably need to be looking for another job. Now, I know not everybody can do that. And, work, you know, you, maybe you're a single parent with three kids and you're holding down two jobs. And it would be a very crass of me to say, well, just get another job. It's not that simple, I know. But at least when you know what's causing the problem, at least then you can start making, you know, adapting to it or trying to be just like, OK, that's just my values. I need to do this for my family. But, it, you know, and, and just... Just being aware. It's all about awareness, I think, with this stuff. That's right. So, um, really, it's really just like what Tim said. Make sure you focus on, any, if anything, on the top three. Make sure you understand clearly your values. I What I got from this is make sure that your values doesn't come just because you're picking it up from your parents. Make sure that they make sense to you. Because some of us, yes. we yes. get... Everything like, oh, my parents did it this way, but it doesn't mean that it's correct. We are here to make um, modifications, to make improvements, and everything that our parents did is not always correct. It helped us, but we always need to get better and better and better for our future, for our children, etc., etc., etc. So, um, Tim, I'm going to allow you to leave the last word, and, and you know I talk a lot, so um, I'm going to let you say the last words and, you know, whatever you want to invite them. If you have an Instagram or Facebook, whatever it is that you want to say, please go ahead and say it. Okay, well, um, I, I, to be honest with you, I use social media just for personal use, so no, I, I, I don't. But, but I'll just say this. It's no good knowing your values if you don't live your values. So figure out your values, what, 
what they are and do your best. Don't worry about me or whatever. Come into you know my website. I say go, take this information, use it because you know people say knowledge is power. It's absolute nonsense. It's the application of knowledge that's power. So you now know about values. No excuses. Go and implement them. And um, for that, thank you. Don't forget we are here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. Thank you.